sciatic nerve it is the thickest nerve present in the body it is one of the terminal branches of the sacral plexus root value it has two components tibial component and peroneal component so the root value for the tibial component is ventral division of anterior primary ramae of L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3 spinal nerves the root value for the peroneal component is dorsal division of L4, L5, S1 and S2 spinal nerves so the tibial component ventral division of L4 to S3 the peroneal component dorsal division of L4 to S2 spinal nerves course the nerve starts in the pelvis in front of the piriformis it exits the pelvis by passing through the greater sciatic notch where it enters the gluteal region and descends in the posterior compartment of the thigh that is the hamstring compartment of the thigh at the junction of upper two third and lower one third of the thigh the sciatic nerve divides into tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve so the division takes place at the junction of upper two third and lower one third of the thigh relations anteriorly it is related to number one superior gamellus number two obturator internus number three inferior gamellus number four quadratus femoris number five adductor magnus so above the tendon of obturator internus the superior gamellus is present below the tendon of obturator internus the inferior gamellus is present posterior relations number one pyriformis number two gluteus maximus number three long head of biceps femoris long head of biceps femoris so this forms the posterior relation of the sciatic nerve branches and distribution so there are two components in the sciatic nerve tibial component and the common peroneal from the main branch main trunk the sciatic nerve gives an articular branch to hip joint so articular branch to the hip joint is from the main trunk number two muscular branches the tibial component gives muscular branches to hamstring muscles that is number one semitendinosus number two semimembranosus number three long head of biceps femoris number four hamstring part of the adductor magnus the peroneal component of the sciatic nerve gives muscular branch to short head of biceps femoris variations the sciatic nerve instead of dividing into tibial and common peroneal nerve at the junction of upper two third and lower one third of the thigh sometimes the division takes place in the pelvic region so in such cases the tibial component emerges near the lower margin of the piriformis and the common peroneal component either pierces the piriformis or comes out on the upper border of the piriformis applied anatomy number 1 sciatica it is a condition in which there is a shooting pain along the course of the sciatic nerve in the posterior aspect of the thigh 
due to pressure or irritation of the roots of the sciatic nerve. Slipping food. The sciatic nerve is exposed between the gluteus maximus and the longer of biceps femoris. It is not covered by the muscular structures. So when there is a compression or pressure on the sciatic nerve at this point, so the sciatic nerve is compressed towards the femur. This results in temporary sensory loss or paresthesia of the lower limb. This condition is known as sleeping foot. Common peroneal nerve. It is the one of the branch of the sacral plexus or one of the component of the sacral plexus. Root value. It is formed by the dorsal division of anterior primary ramae of L4, L5, S1 and S2 spinal nerves. The common peroneal nerve near the neck of the fibula divides into two branches deep peroneal nerve and superficial peroneal nerve. Deep peroneal nerve it is the chief nerve of anterior compartment of leg. It is one of the division of or branch of common peroneal nerve. Course and relations. It arises from the common peroneal nerve near the neck of the fibula. That is the first point. It enters the leg, anterior compartment of leg by piercing the anterior intermuscular septum. See, this is the line which represents the anterior intermuscular septum. So, it enters the anterior compartment of the leg by piercing the anterior intermuscular septum in the leg. Okay. It enters the leg by piercing the extensor digitorum longus. By piercing the extensor digitorum longus and runs between the extensor digitorum longus and the tibialis anterior. Where it runs along with the course of the anterior tibial artery. So, in the upper one third of the leg, the nerve is lateral to the anterior tibial artery. In the middle one third of the leg, the nerve is anterior to the anterior tibial artery. In the lower one third of the leg, the nerve is lateral to the anterior tibial artery. So, the nerve is first lies lateral to the artery then anterior to the artery, again lateral to the artery. Instead of crossing to the medial side, the nerve hesitates to cross to the medial side and it once again comes to the lateral relation of the artery. So, the nerve is also known as nervous hesitance. Near the ankle joint, the nerve ends by dividing into two branches medial and lateral branches. Branches and distribution. It gives muscular branches to tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus and peroneal tertius. The lateral terminal branch gives an articular branch to ankle joint. Then it runs deep to the extensor digitorum brevis where it forms a pseudoganglion. From the pseudoganglion, 
the lateral branch gives muscular branch to extensor digitorum brevis and it also supplies the tarsal joint and metatarso phalangeal joint of second, third and fourth toes. The medial branch gives muscular branch to first dorsal intraosseous. Then it continues as the cutaneous branch where it ends by supplying the first interdigital cleft. That is the cleft between the great toe and the second toe. So this is the area which is supplied by the deep peroneal nerve. Applied anatomy. Injury to deep peroneal nerve results in paralysis of the anterior compartment muscles of the leg. So this results in loss of dorsiflexion of the foot. Dorsiflexion of the foot. And this condition is known as foot draw. Since the extensor digitorum longus and extensor allosis longus are paralyzed, the toes are not able to extend. We cannot extend the toes. So there is loss of extension of toes. Superficial peroneal nerve. It is one of the branch of the common peroneal nerve. Course and relations. Near the neck of fibula, okay, it lies superficial. Then it enters the lateral compartment of leg between the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Then the nerve lies between peroneus brevis and extensor digitorum longus. At the junction of upper two thirds and lower one third of the leg, the nerve pierces the defacia and becomes superficial, where it divides into medial and lateral terminal branches. Branches and distribution. It gives muscular branch to peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. The medial and lateral branch supplies the skin over the dorsum of the food, except the areas supplied by the saphenous nerve and the sural nerve and the deep peroneal nerve. So except these three areas, the remaining area of the dorsum of the foot is supplied by superficial peroneal nerve. It also supplies the skin over the lower one third of the lateral surface of the leg. Applied anatomy. Injury to superficial peroneal nerve results in paralysis of peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. They are the powerful avatars of the food. So there is loss of aversion of food. There is paresthesia or sensory loss over the lateral surface of the lower one third of the leg and also on the dorsum of the food. 